I think there's a balance with Bible journaling that there's the creative aspect and then there's the study aspect. I really like to find a balance between the two so that I'm actually getting in the word, but I'm also having fun and it doesn't necessarily seem like work and that the Bible looks fun and inviting. This is where I've been. Guys, you're being a little distracting. The problem is my balance is a little bit off right now and it's not actually the direction that you think it might be in. Right now I'm doing a ton of scripture and study which is fantastic but I do want to boost up my creativity and I feel like that's kind of dropped down. I'm just not feeling as artistic. I think I have a lot of artistic abilities and skills but when it comes to drawing and painting that's very new to me and you can see in some of my flip throughs that I'm not fantastic. Art is not my major skill set. I just like to have fun with it, but I've just found myself in a little bit of a rut. So recently I found this incredible idea, almost seemed too good to be true. If you are interested in Bible journaling, but you're not artistic, I've got something in store for you that I think you're absolutely gonna love. And bonus, it's cheap, it's easy to do, and it can make your Bible look absolutely beautiful. So if you're interested, Let's get going. But I'll show you an examples of Bible journaling. Here are some earlier ones that I did. There's colored pencils. There's a little bit of marker. This was actually a printout I used. There's washi tape. Same here, printed, cut it out. This is a tip in I added from a notebook. Technically, this is all considered Bible journaling too. Highlights and just adding in notes. That doesn't necessarily have to be art. This was actually one of the first ones I did too. I found a reference online, so I drew it out with a pencil and then washi watercolored it in. So again, these are just examples of Bible journaling. That, I think this is just a drawing I found from Pinterest. Pinterest is the source. That is where you go if you need some ideas. Let's see. Okay, we'll get to that one in a second. So here's where the game changer happens. Let's say you're not really artistic, you're not very comfortable with your artistic abilities, or maybe you're even a little nervous to like put pen to paper in your Bible and just start painting. Here's something that I think is gonna be an incredible resource. So what we are doing is we are Mod Podging, sounds weird, Mod Podging, napkins in her Bible. Napkins, you heard me right. So I will show you all the steps, everything that you need, and then how it turns out. It is absolutely beautiful. I couldn't be happier with it, and I hope you give it a try. The tools and supplies that you'll need to do this, you are gonna need some Mod Podge. I just got the matte one. Two is a glass jar with a little bit of water and a paintbrush. I have a paper plate. That's where you're gonna put the paint and the water. You do need a pair of scissors or a Zigzacto knife pens. Obviously most important, besides the Bible, you're gonna want a variety of disposable napkins. I ran over to Home Goods yesterday. Every Home Goods are kind of in different spots. I noticed there's a huge collection in the checkout line. So once you walk in, sometimes your stores will have a bunch there. So I'll just show you a variety. So I got this really beautiful citrus one. These are about $3.99 for a full pack. I found these beautiful floral ones these other lemon and I feel like I could cut and use the this kind of checkered pattern as well I found these hearts and then I haven't used this one yet here are a variety of some of the ones that I've already cut out so you can see some lemon some hearts some oranges some of the floral and so when I'm just kind of feeling lazy or sitting on the couch while watching TV I'll just cut a bunch of these out and then have them available. Can you believe that this is napkin? I am absolutely amazed. And the cool thing is, kind of thickens the paper a little bit. It gives it a, a nice texture. And so you could see I put some of the napkin here. I even cut some out and overlapped it. So there's two different layers. There are a few things that I have learned while doing this is sometimes when you're painting a lot, it will bleed the ink. I think, actually this ink is from this side. So some of that faded away, which, you know, I'm a little bit 
bit more conscious now when I'm applying these to make sure to add it to areas that there's not, it's not gonna cover up some ink. Or taking a picture of the text beforehand so that after it's dried, I can go back in and rewrite this. I'm gonna actually follow up with pen and just kind of darken this. So once you've cut that open, then you're gonna wanna open it up. Pull out the layers first. Now this is probably the hardest part out of everything because they're so thin. So then from here, what I normally do is I'll either cut it in half or cut it in quarters. Probably wanna do a mix because sometimes I'll just use little pieces, but that's kind of the base right there and then cut however you want out. But that was the easiest way I found to cut them out. blend go into both of the pages. Instead of just tearing from here, I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna slowly kind of just start pulling back. I might try parchment paper. That might be a little bit more helpful so it doesn't stick quite as much. I've also noticed the thicker the paper, so when I use cardstock, it's a little bit easier. All right, so I don't mind this tearing because it's already off the Bible page. And I'm gonna turn it out so I just cut this now. All right, this is what it looks like. In time. And again, it kind of thickens the page. The only thing that really thins it is if you tear it off too quickly. I hope this provided value and a little bit of inspiration to add a little bit more creativity into your Bible. All right, guys, talk to you soon.